At number 10, the S-5 submarine accident from 1920. The USS S-5, SS-110, a government-type S-class submarine of the United States Navy, holds a special place in naval history due to a remarkable sequence of events that led to its sinking while under tow during full power trials in 1920. Constructed at the Portsmouth Navy Yard in Kittery, Maine, her keel was laid down on December 4, 1917. She was then launched on November 10, 1919, and commissioned on March 6, 1920. But on September 1, 1920, during a submerged test run in the Atlantic Ocean off the Delaware Capes, disaster struck. Water flooded into the submarine through the main air induction system, overwhelming the control room, engine room, torpedo room, and motor room. This incident, triggered by a series of accidents, left the submarine in a dire situation, resting on the ocean floor. The crew's resourcefulness and quick thinking became their salvation. They used the submarine's buoyancy to tilt it on its nose, allowing the stern to rise above the water's surface. Miraculously, the crew managed to contact a vessel on the surface that stood by as they cut their way to freedom through the stern of the submarine. Everyone on board the submarine was rescued. However, subsequent efforts to salvage the submarine proved unsuccessful. Despite attempts by the U.S. Navy to raise the S-5 from the ocean depths, it ultimately sank again, this time for good, during a tow operation September 3, 1920. At number 9, the HMS Afray Submarine Tragedy from 1951. HMS Afray, an Amphion-class British submarine, emerged from the twilight of the Second World War as one of the 16 submarines in her class designed for the Pacific Theater against Japan. As the Royal Navy submarine was lost at sea, her story echoed through history, marked by the tragedy on April 16, 1951, an incident that claimed the lives of 75 individuals. The day's events unfolded as HMS Afray embarked on a simulated war exercise called Exercise Spring Train. Operating with a crew of 50, which was previously reduced from a crew of 61, the submarine was accompanied by one sergeant, one corporal, and two marines from the Special Boat Service. Also added to the roster were a commander, engineer, a naval instructor, seven engineering branch lieutenants, and 13 sub-lieutenants undergoing vital submarine officer training, bringing the total complement to 75. The submarine's captain had been given unusual orders for the exercise. Tasked with dropping off the Special Boat Service team along the southwest coast of England, the Afray was to enable their landing and facilitate their return under the cover of darkness. The exercise was to continue until her scheduled return on April 23rd for essential repairs, including correcting a leak in a battery tank. On that fateful day, the Afray departed her home base, exchanging normal communications at around 9 p.m., indicating that she was preparing to dive at 2115 BST, roughly 30 miles from the Isle of Wight. The expected surfacing signal was due by 9 a.m. the next day, but it was never received. The subsequent search and rescue operation was comprised of 26 ships, submarines, and aircraft, but the relentless search ultimately ended in despair. The submarine's final resting place was discovered two months later, seven and a half miles northwest of Alderney. Number 8. HMS Thetis Submarine Disaster of 1939 Commissioned to strengthen the Royal Navy's capabilities during a period of heightened international tensions, Thetis met her tragic end during sea trials in Liverpool Bay, England on June 1, 1939. Constructed by Camel Laird in Birkenhead, England and launched on June 29, 1938, Thetis embarked on her final diving trials under the command of Lieutenant Commander Guy Bolas. However, tragedy struck when a confusing layout of bow caps led to the accidental opening of the inner door of tube number 5. The inrush of water caused the Thetis to sink to the seabed, coming to rest 150 feet below the surface. 
Amid the chaos, four individuals managed to utilize the submarine's one-man escape chamber, but a fifth panicked and inadvertently jammed it. And unfortunately, the accident resulted in the loss of 99 lives. The aftermath of the Thetis disaster triggered profound changes in submarine design and safety measures. The incident prompted the redesign of torpedo tubes on British and Australian subs. The introduction of the Thetis clip, a latch on the inner torpedo tube door aimed to prevent such accidents by allowing incremental openings to verify tube status before fully exposing them to the sea. The catastrophe spurred legal action and brought attention to issues of negligence. The Admiralty's decision to withhold certain information fueled controversy, leading to subsequent scrutiny and legal changes. The memory of the Thetis disaster persists through memorials and exhibits, standing as a solemn reminder of the price paid for naval advancements. A number seven K-129 submarine tragedy from 1968. The enigmatic sinking of the Soviet submarine K-129 in 1968 stands as a cryptic chapter in Cold War history. This Gulf II class submarine of the Soviet Navy, having completed two 70-day ballistic missile combat patrols in 1967, embarked on her third patrol in February 1968. Under the command of Captain First Rank Vladimir Kobzar and with Captain Second Rank Alexander Zhuravin as the senior assistant, K-129 sailed on her final mission with a total of 83 souls on board. But despite conducting a successful test dive and reporting her status by radio, K-129's communication abruptly ceased. Soviet naval authorities launched search and rescue efforts, but by March, she was declared missing. U.S. intelligence picked up anomalous acoustic signals, though, leading to a triangulation of a potential event location from the Soviet's search area. The submarine's wreckage was ultimately located by the USS Halibut, northwest of Oahu, at a depth of approximately 16,076 feet in August of 1968. This discovery marked the beginning of a covert operation known as Project Azorian. With President Richard Nixon's authorization, the CIA orchestrated the salvage operation using the Hughes Glomar Explorer, a ship designed under the cover story of mining manganese nodules. Speculations of the cause of the disaster range from mechanical failures to crew mishandling, which eventually led to flooding. And while some suggested a hydrogen explosion within the batteries during charging, other theories included speculation of a collision with a U.S. sub and a missile explosion triggered by a leaking missile door seal. But these claims were vehemently denied by the U.S. Navy. Project Azorian aimed to recover valuable intelligence and potentially nuclear weaponry from the sunken submarine. The operation managed to raise a portion of the wreck, but it was marred by a critical failure that resulted in part of the wreckage slipping back to the ocean floor. The extent of what was salvaged and the secrets it revealed remain classified, yet the incident underscores the lengths nations were willing to go to to gain a strategic advantage during the Cold War. Number 6. The INS Sintarakshak Submarine Disaster from 2013 the devastating sinking of the Indian Navy's INS Sindarakshak on August 14, 2013, remains a tragic episode in modern maritime history. The Russian-built Kilo-class submarine was docked at the Mumbai naval base when a massive explosion rocked its hull, resulting in a catastrophic fire that engulfed the vessel. The disaster claimed the lives of 18 crew members and dealt a significant blow to India's naval capabilities. While the exact cause of the explosion remains disputed, initial investigations pointed toward a possible torpedo detonation within the submarine. The incident occurred during a routine armament loading, and speculation centered on mishandling of torpedoes or a malfunction in the submarine systems. The explosion tore through the submarine's compartments, causing it to rapidly sink. The tragedy emphasized the inherent risks in naval operations, and the challenges of maintaining aging submarines. The loss of the INS Sindarakshak underscored the need for stringent safety protocols and maintenance procedures 
to ensure the well-being of crew members. The incident also highlighted the complex nature of submarine operations and the vital role these vessels play in a nation's defense strategy. INS Sindarakshak's sinking prompted introspection within the Indian Navy and spurred efforts to enhance safety measures and modernize the fleet. Would you ever risk your life by diving into the ocean depths in a submarine? Let us know in the comments down below. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. Now, on to number 5. The Loss of the USS Squalus in 1939 The sinking of the USS Squalus on May 23, 1939 stands as another tragic chapter in submarine history followed by one of the most remarkable rescue operations ever executed. The incident occurred during a test dive off the coast of New Hampshire, where the submarine with a crew of 59 sailors was participating in routine trials. As the submarine descended, water began to flood the aft compartments due to a mechanical failure in the main induction valve, causing the squalus to plummet to the ocean floor at a depth of about 240 feet. The crew struggled to escape the sinking vessel, but in a desperate race against time, they managed to send a distress signal before the situation became dire. Responding to the distress call, the USS Sculpin and USS Falcon rushed to the scene, along with civilian rescue teams. The rescue operation quickly became a harrowing test of innovation and courage. A diving bell designed by the Navy's experimental diving unit was successfully attached to the Squalus, allowing the crew to be brought to the surface one by one. Then, over the course of three days, 33 crew members were rescued from the dark depths of the submarine, with the final survivor being brought up on May 27th. Tragically, 26 crew members lost their lives in the disaster, highlighting the inherent dangers of submarine operations. However, the Squalus incident spurred advancements in submarine rescue technology and procedures. Lessons learned from the rescue operation led to improvements in submarine design, escape mechanisms, and emergency protocols. Number 4. The Disappearance of the ARA San Juan in 2017 The disappearance of the Argentine Navy submarine ARA San Juan in 2017 was a tragic event that shook the maritime community. The submarine with a crew of 44 sailors vanished while on a routine mission to the South Atlantic Ocean, leaving the world in suspense as an extensive search and rescue effort was launched. On November 15, 2017, the ARA San Juan reported an electrical malfunction and a battery fire, which were later determined to have been caused by a short circuit and the subsequent release of hydrogen gas. The submarine was then ordered to return to its base in Mar del Plata, but communication was lost shortly thereafter. But despite intensive search efforts involving multiple countries and sophisticated technology, the ARA San Juan remained elusive, with debris and oil slicks indicating a possible implosion or catastrophic event. Families of the crew members endured an agonizing wait for news and the international maritime community rallied to offer assistance in the search. Tragically, though, the wreckage of the ARA San Juan was finally located a year later, in November 2018, at a depth of nearly 3,000 feet on the ocean floor. Number 3. The Disappearance of the USS Scorpion in 1968 the USS Scorpion was a United States Navy Skipjack-class nuclear-powered submarine that met its end on May 22, 1968, under mysterious circumstances. Its disappearance and subsequent discovery have remained shrouded in intrigue, sparking various theories and speculation. During its final deployment, the Scorpion was on a mission in the Atlantic Ocean, returning from a patrol near the Mediterranean. The submarine was scheduled to arrive at its home port in Norfolk, Virginia, but it failed to make its expected radio check-in on May 27, 1968. Concerns then grew as communications attempts went unanswered, and the Navy launched an extensive search and rescue operation. On late October 1968, more than five months after its disappearance, 
the remains of the scorpion were discovered approximately 400 miles southwest of the Azores at a depth of around 10,000 feet. The submarine had been crushed and shattered, indicating a catastrophic event. The exact cause of the disaster, however, remained elusive. Multiple theories emerged to explain the tragic fate of the USS Scorpion. Some suggested a malfunction in its torpedo tubes, while others speculated on a possible collision with a Soviet submarine or a naval mine. Another theory proposed a failure in the submarine's battery system, leading to a hydrogen explosion. The Navy conducted an extensive investigation into the disaster, which yielded no definitive conclusion. The final report indicated that an internal malfunction, possibly related to a torpedo or battery explosion, was the most likely cause. However, due to the lack of concrete evidence, the exact sequence of events leading to the demise of the 99 crew members of the Scorpion will never be known. Number 2. The USS Thresher Disaster from 1963 The USS Thresher Disaster occurred on April 10, 1963, when the United States Navy's nuclear-powered submarine USS Thresher sank during deep diving tests off the coast of Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and sadly, the catastrophe claimed the lives of all 129 crew members on board. The USS Thresher was an advanced nuclear-powered submarine designed for anti-submarine warfare and intelligence gathering. During a routine deep diving test, the submarine encountered difficulties, and a series of technical failures culminated in the loss of propulsion, buoyancy, and ultimately, the ability to surface. The sub exceeded its designed maximum depth and suffered a catastrophic implosion resulting in its rapid descent to the ocean floor, approximately 300 miles off the coast of Massachusetts. The tragedy prompted a profound investigation into the causes of the disaster. It was discovered that a braze joint in the saltwater piping system had failed, causing a leak that led to electrical failures and the shutdown of vital systems. The submarine's inability to blow its ballast tanks and surface under its own power, ultimately, sealed its fate. The investigation revealed flaws in both design and construction practices, as well as a lack of thorough testing and inspection procedures. And in response to the Thresher disaster, the U.S. Navy established the Subsafe program, which aimed to improve the safety and reliability of its submarines through rigorous design standards, enhanced quality control, and extensive testing procedures. The program implemented stringent requirements for materials, construction methods, and inspections, ensuring that submarines met the highest safety standards before entering service. And at number one, the Kursk tragedy from 2000. The Kursk submarine disaster unfolded on August 12, 2000, when the Russian Navy's nuclear-powered submarine K-141 Kursk suffered a series of explosions and sank in the Barent Sea. This catastrophic event not only led to the loss of all 118 crew members, but also exposed the challenges and limitations of Russia's post-Soviet naval infrastructure. The Kursk, an Oscar II-class submarine, was a symbol of Russia's naval prowess. During a routine naval exercise, a combination of factors, including a torpedo malfunction, unstable propellant, and improper handling led to a violent explosion in the submarine's torpedo room. The initial explosion was followed by several secondary blasts, tearing through the Kursk and resulting in a severe breach of its hull. Despite international offers of assistance, the Russian government initially hesitated to accept foreign aid, causing a delay in rescue efforts. The lack of specialized equipment and trained personnel also hindered any timely rescue attempts. Meanwhile, the trapped crew members battled for survival in the dark, frigid depths of the Barents Sea. The subsequent days were marked by intense debates and diplomatic discussions, as well as mounting public outcry within Russia. But eventually, Russian divers managed to reach the sunken submarine. Sadly, though, it became tragically clear that all crew members had perished due to the severe damage and harsh conditions. 
The Kursk tragedy prompted a renewed focus on naval safety and reform within the Russian Navy. It highlighted the necessity of improved communication, coordination, and international cooperation during maritime emergencies. The incident also catalyzed changes in Russia's naval culture and its approach to transparency as the government faced criticism for its handling of the disaster and its reluctance to accept help from other countries. Do you think the 118 crew members of the Kursk could have been saved if Russia had only accepted aid from other countries? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.